Hola, and welcome to your notes on double object pronouns. By the end of the day, you will be able to use double object pronouns to talk about food and service. Let's get started with a review on object pronouns. We have seen two types of object pronouns already. We have seen direct object pronouns. Those are me, te, lo, and la, uh, nos, os, los, and las. We've been using direct object pronouns um, to represent the thing that the action has happened upon. So like the food in John bought the food would be it, or in Spanish it would be la compra. La compro, he bought it, he bought the food. It's the thing that he bought. That's your direct object. This is the opposite of a, an indirect object pronoun. Indirect object pronouns, while they start out the same with me, de, instead of los, we have les, nos, os, instead of los, oh, I did that wrong. <laughs> Got you. Um, instead of los, we have les, but also there's no los, it's just them. Um, these are the guys that you learned a long, long time ago with gustar and your other backwards verbs, um, but really indirect object pronoun are usually people and they're, you know, the, the person to whom or for whom the action happened. So, cool. Anyway, um, so in English, when we have both of these together, um, the direct object pronoun is going to go first. Um, shoot, I think I wrote that down in my notes wrong. No, I didn't. It goes... Okay, I see what I did. I see what I'm going for. Anyway, okay, the direct object pronoun appears first after the verb. That's in this case. Um, and then the indirect object pronoun becomes the object of a preposition. So I don't know why I included this example in there. That's, I mean, that's kind of how we talk, I guess. Um, but rather, when we use two objects, we say it's rather two object pronouns. Um, we use it as our direct object, you as our indirect object, saying John gave it to you, John gave the food to you. Okay. Um, so in Spanish, if we have two object pronouns in the same sentence, they are both going before the verb. So that's exciting. But unlike in Spanish, no, unlike in English, where the direct object comes first, the indirect object is going to go first. And then the direct object comes second. Okay. Um, so if the sentence was Juan dio la comida a ti, he gave the food to you. I'm actually going to switch that order. Te la dio. So we put our indirect object pronoun first, and then we put our direct object second. But take that. Make it really big because that is the key idea of the day. So write that ginormously in your, um, there, that'll, that'll do it. Um, write it real big in your notes. That's your key idea. Indirect object followed by direct object. Love it. Memorize it. That's your life. Indirect object goes first. Direct object goes second. Cool, right? But... Here's a fun special exception. I need this to be green. Here we go. Oh, and I need this to be orange. Perfect. All right. So if you have a conjugated verb, that's, you know, a normal verb. Followed by an infinitive. That's a verb that ends in R. Or a gerund. A gerund is a verb that ends in ndo. So if you have an infinitive or a gerund, you can put both the pronouns before the conjugated verb or you can attach them to the end of the verbal. So that is, you can do your um, indirect object, direct object, indirect object, direct object, or you can just attach them as one word, nos, lo, like that. Nos, lo, just chomp at the end. So if they were going to tell us it, tell it to us, <laughs> maybe ellos 
nos, the indirect object, nos lo van a decir, or ellos van a decir nos lo. Ha ha ha. Just smash them all together in one word. Beautiful. Also works. So this is this is our infinitive. Also works on our gerund, right? Nos lo están diciendo. Great. Or you can just smack them all at the end of our endo verb. Great. Están diciendo nos lo. Wow, that's a mouthful. But let's look at emphasis for a second. Ellos nos lo van a decir. Here, our emphasis is on decir, that syllable. Sir, decir. In order for that still to be the case, when we attach on a bunch of different verbs here, it's not verbs, a bunch of different extra syllables here, that's going to want the emphasis to go here, but that's wrong. This here, no slow? No. That, mm -mm. We want it to be on that same syllable, seed. We want it to be on that seed. So in order for that to happen, we need to put an accent there in the end of the infinitive. Decir no slow. So an accent goes on the end of the infinitive. An accent is also going to go here. We go están diciendo. Our accent naturally goes here on cien. Siendo. So we need to put an accent still on that e because right now the accent is naturally going no slow. Diciendo no slow. And that sounds like a weird Scandinavian name, I think. So the accent needs to go there. Diciendo nos. So we got accent on that e. Beautiful. So look out for your accent rule. And really those two together. That's the key idea. That's the, so we have IO and accents. But just kidding. There's one more key idea. There's actually three key ideas. Um, maybe the funnest one to remember is the lay low rule. Like guys, when working with object pronouns, you've got to lay low. And here's what that means. Um, if you have two pronouns that start with L, you need to change the indirect object pronoun, the C. Because if you have a case like lay low, that's not allowed. We do not lay low here. Okay, so instead of lay low, or in this case, lay la, we change that lay to C. Okay, so lay low, not allowed. Still not allowed here. We have less low. Oh, that's breaking the lay low rule. So we need to change that less to a say. So you need you need to lay low, but actually like don't don't lay low because lay low is bad. <laughs> so um say. Put say instead of lay or less. There you go. Okay, three key ideas <laughs> are that coughing is a good way to get things out of your throat. And then indirect object comes first. Put accents. They can go on the beginning or they can go on the end. And then you got to lay low. Change that lay to a say. Okay, that's a lot of theory. Let's put it into practice. Abran sus, um, sus libros de texto de Avancemos a páginas 289 y completen las actividades. So in activity 13, um, we're given these sentences, these questions, and we need to say, we are going to serve them to these people. We are going to give them to this person. We're going to bring things to that, right? So first, what we're going to identify is we're going to identify our indirect object. Then we'll identify our direct object. I'll underline my verb and we'll put them together. Awesome. Yeah, um, so let's look for our indirect object first. Our indirect objects are always at the end. A todos, a la señora, a esos hombres, al chico, a la abuela, a los padres. So we need to figure out what indirect object matches a todos. That would be les. A la señora, le. A esos hombres, mm -hmm -hmm. a esos hombres, les, le, le. And this. But <laughs> we're going to undo all our hard work because look, now when we pick our direct objects, 
That's el entre mes la especialidad, los filetes a las sirvietas, el tenedor, la cuenta. Two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to kind of run out of room to make this look pretty. And then we're going to have a lay low situation. Ooh. Okay. So el entre mes, lo. La especialidad, la. Los, las. Eh, nope, low, and la. So, while we would want to say, vamos a servir les lo, that breaks the lay low rule. And while we might want to say, vamos a dar le la, that breaks the lay low rule. So all this hard work here, all these les, 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 doesn't matter. Because we're going to use se for everybody. So all of our indirect objects are se. Bemi. Okay. This gives us two options. One, we can just kind of plop them all together. Vamos a servir se lo. And that gives us our first, our first shot. Vamos a... I think that's a typo. That's a typo. Awesome. Okay, vamos a our normal verb. Vamos a servir se lo. Boom. Notice that accent. We got to keep servir. That vir needs to be our emphasized syllable. That's what happens if we put our... Um, pronouns at the end. You can also put them before your vamos, giving us se lo vamos a servir. And then you don't have to worry about accents. I was trying to figure out what do I use more often, and I don't think I, um, I don't think I consistently do one or the other. Anyway, okay. Número dos, la especialidad so we have, vamos a, se, vamos a dar se la. Again, with the accent on the dar. However, if you want to go se la, vamos a dar, that's also fine. Número tres, we have los filetes. So, vamos a traer se los. Too much, los filetes. Again, accent on the traer. Otherwise, you want to put them out in front. Se los vamos a traer. Brilliant. Número cuatro. Wrong tool. Número cuatro es las servietas. So vamos a traer se las. Again, accent. Traer se las. Here. Uh, cuatro. Put them out in front. Se las vamos a traer. So they can go on the front. They can go in the back. Número cinco, we have el tenedor, el otro tenedor. So that would give us a lo. We have se lo vamos a poner. You can put your vamos a poner wherever you want. But if you have it in front of your guys, those need to have an accent. And then finally, le vamos a dar la, oops, la cuenta. Gives us a feminine singular direct object. We're keeping our say so we can lay low. Whee! I mean, don't, don't lay low. Laying low is, laying low is bad. <laughs> anyway, it's still a fun rule though. Don't lay low. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. And then when we attach our pronouns to the end of our verb, we got to slap an accent on there so it still sounds cool. It doesn't sound funky. And there we have it. If you have any questions, let me know in class. All right, moving down to activity 14. Um, we have Senora Cruz, who is a super positive person, and she says, yes, do the thing. And Senor Cruz is a super negative person, and he's like, no, nah, man, don't do the thing. So we have to determine what um, pronouns we want to use. So let's go through, first identify what dish we have here. What is this? And then we'll find our, um, 
in direct object according to what the thing is. And then we'll find our indirect object according to whom we serve. Cool. Alrighty, here we go. So first, this beautiful pixelated dish right here is a spaghetti. So that's los espaguetis. Los espaguetis is going to give us a los. Número dos, tenemos, actually, I couldn't figure out what this is. This is el plato, I guess. So that gives us lo. Here. Redo. Los. We have los espaguetis. Giving us los for a direct object. Here we've got el plato. Giving us lo for our direct object. Número tres, tenemos la paella. Giving us la for our direct object. Número cuatro, tenemos el pastel or la tarta. I'm going to go la tarta. Giving us a direct object of la. <laughs> uh, número cinco, tenemos el flan. Giving us a direct object of lo. Finalmente, número 6, tenemos la chuleta de cerdo. Giving us la for our um, direct object. Now, we want our um, indirect objects to all match. Uh, Why were there two things? I forget why there were two things. Shoot. Oh, welcome to Struggles with Senora U. Oh, well, I think we're just going to go with the first one. And we'll look back on it in class. We'll see what we can figure out. No, that's going to be wrong too. What did I do? Oh, well. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. So, la chica is going to give us le, el chico, le, los señores, les, sorry, Juan, le, ustedes, les, uh, los jóvenes, los, but sorry, los, les, man, what a struggle today, but those will all be, say, situations, because we got to lay low, lay low, lay low, lay low, guys, okay, so it would be, se, los, se, lo, se, la, se, la, se, lo, se, la, boom. Maybe I just kind Whatever, I'm, I'm over it. We're just going with the first ones, and then we'll call it a day. Okie dokie. So, um, Senora Cruz is going to be like, si, sirva, whatever. So whenever you remember when you're using commands and you have an affirmative command, um, your pronouns need to go after your verb. So, you know, sirva, indirect object, direct object. For all of them. That's going to be our pattern. So I'm just going to copy that down real quick. If that's okay with you guys. However, on the negative side, we're going to start with our no. And then we still have that same pattern. Indirect object, direct object, but they are separate words followed by our command. So all of our sentences are going to follow the same pattern. And now we're just going to fill them in. These are all going to be so... That's hard to read. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, si, sirva, se los. But no, no, se los. Oh, that was the first one. I'm sorry. It's already in there, my bad. Um, numero dos, el chico, si sirva, se lo, 
but no se lo sirva. Tres, los señores. Sí, sirva, se, la, pero no, no se la sirva. Cuatro, sí, sirva, se, la, pero no se la sirva. Sirva, se, lo a ustedes, pero no se la sirva. Oh, that's low, that's low, my bad. No se lo sirva. Y finalmente sirva se la as all one word. No se la sirva. Awesome. Alrighty, for your other activity, you just gotta fill in who did who did the thing. Um, and then the other activities are pretty self-explanatory. So I'll leave you to it. Figure out what I was trying to go for here, and I will update you later. Have a wonderful time on the rest of your homework. Hey y'all, we are back. Um, turns out that yes, Senora Cruz was. So this is further explanation of Actividad 14. Um, turns out that yes, Senora Cruz is a fr affirmative per person, but Senor Cruz isn't totally like a fuddy duddy. He just has alternate opinions. Okay, right? So um, he disagrees with Senora Cruz, but then he says, no, this should actually go to someone else. So that's what the second people are. Those are his someone else's. So now we're just going to take all of our indirect objects and adapt them to new indirect objects. So, yay! But guess what? We only have to change a couple because el chico is still se, la chica still se. Nosotros is going to become nos. So well, we're going to keep the la because it's still la paella. Yay, that's exciting. Um, me, that's going to change to me. La stays the same because it's still la torta, tarta. And then finally, um, ellos is the same, la señora is the same. So now we just need to attach some positive commands over to señor Cruz. And that tells me I, I wrote too big. Yes, I wrote too big. So I'm going to move them down a little bit to create some space. And then guess what, guys? The good news is we already did a lot of the hard work with our affirmative commands over here on Senora Cruz. So we're just going to bring them over because the direct objects didn't change. Only the indirect objects did. So we're going to change all of our yellow guys. Whoops, that was not as smooth as I thought it would be. Okay, here we go. Putting capital S is the beginning of our sentence. And let's fill in those indirect, our brand new indirect objects to finish out our commands. Okay, el chico es del sirva se lo. Oh, that, I did it again. I did number one again. Oh, I guess we need to fill. Okay, no, no se lo sirva. Sirva se los al chico. Boom. Okay, next. Uh, no se lo sirva, sirva se lo a la chica. Awesome. Número tres. No se la sirva, sirva nos la a nosotros. Sweetums. Número cuatro. No se la sirva, sirva me la a mí. Serve me the cake, man after my own heart. Ah, oh, yes. I want cake. Okie dokie. Extra credit for bringing me cake. No se lo sirva. Sirva se lo a ellos. Y finalmente, no se la sirva. Sirva se la a las... Oh, it's not going to fit. Las señoras. Boom. Just gonna put that right in there. Nice. So there you have it. That's the second half of activity 14. Our key idea of this lesson is that our indirect object goes before our direct object. Watch your accents if you're attaching to the end of a word and 
Don't lay low, guys. You cannot lay low with your uh, double object pronouns. Gotta say low. Yep. Have a lovely time on your homework.